Gopal from uh, Indira Gandhi National Center of Arts, who actually contributed a major uh, amount of the first part where we have pictures of independence movement, important leaders from Delhi and in the north. The second part of the exhibition is what we call the Ansar Heroes of Pondicherry. That is also very interesting. Some of those leaders, even I didn't know, a friend of ours, Mr. Rafael Alanjan, who teaches in the French, he says, he has us. And the third part of the exhibition is about Shirovindu. It's 150 years of Shirovindu's anniversary. Then we got the videos of the Ashram archives. And the Matri Vai was very, very helpful and the Yalta's diversity. So there has been a lot of background work. We actually wanted to do the exhibition in the daily meeting. But uh, due to some logistical issues, it could not be done. The daily meeting is yet to be inaugurated. <coughs> so it's taken some time and great difficulties because we could not fix the images uh, on the wall. Then even the French uh, Institute gave us these panels. So there's been a very quiet collaboration with a lot of different institutions. Which finally, you know, it got delayed by a few months, but I'm happy and really, very, very thankful that it has seen the light of day. And I would thank all of you, my colleague Arun uh, and uh, Charu, Kishore Tripathi from Society, who was good enough to organize everything. So, um, with these words, I hand over the mic to Kishore. He will tell you a little bit about the, the venue, the important, <coughs> and let's go on. Namaste and good afternoon to all. It is indeed a matter of a great pleasure to host this uh, today's event in Madhavi Gita. This is the first exhibition we see after the restoration work was completed. So Madhavi Gita is the center for integral yoga, yoga and vegan culture. And through many activities are uh, going on in the Madhavi Gita and we are also planning to have more conferences, exhibitions and workshops and how we can engage this heritage daily to the community and the people. And we are also planning to have uh, many programs in this uh, beautiful building actually. This is a heritage building. So heritage building has its own uniqueness. Uh, when this exhibition concept came, we also discussed last year, we will also do something. And uh, there are many songs are there, but all songs are limited. I just want to tell you sir, that uh, when we are searching for the Anshan heroes, I coordinated with the photo division and uh, unfortunately I didn't get, I did not know where uh, Shobhai and Arunji happened with the public form we were collected. So we are very happy that uh, Shobhai Society also part of this big initiative. And uh, I welcome you all on behalf of Shobhai Society for coming today. And uh, this is really an unique thing. A unique concept, 75th years of the completion of India's independence, 150 years of Sri Aurobindo's birthday, and on some heroes, <coughs> the, entire, the entire country is celebrating this in one of places. And this is really a unique initiative, and we will take it forward in a joint collaboration basis. And uh, this much, thank you. Welcome, friends. The purpose of this exhibition is that the unsung heroes do not remain unsung for too long. And they, they recreate in our memory the momentous times that they have. <laughs> Historically, events take place and very often even the persons who are participating in those events do not know that the decisions that they take how it is going to affect in future, what important uh, foundation it is laid. As we know that in the 18th century, the European powers were fighting for their empires. India was naturally a very special place for them. And the contours and the borders were constantly changing. There are times, the number of times that country has been occupied but it was a number of times the, the French, uh, the, the British, and it is in 
after 1815 that Pondicherry became a continuous French. The root of it goes back to the post Napoleonic times. Napoleon lost the battle of Waterloo, all the, the European powers they met in Vienna, it was called the famous Congress of Vienna, in which he redrawn the map. And part of the redrawing of the map of Europe it meant redrawing the map in the politics. It's one of the arrangements was that the French will not interfere with British India, that they shall give a free hand to the British in the rest of India. The French kept a few enclaves, four or originally five, for a long time five, because Chandranagar was part of the enclave. Why is it that the French kept these enclaves? <coughs> well, one thing could be that this was a kind of restoration of the prestige that the empire had not really fallen. Later on, it served as a very practical purpose that the slow sailing ships would berth at Mahe, refurbishment themselves, come on this side and continue further in the past. Because the French Empire, the, the focus of the French Empire shifted on far east in India. For sure, the move, the forces that have been unleashed to ensure that India achieves its political Now, he has given some very interesting ideas as to why he moves it as a He said, you see, two things have been established. One, people can no longer think in narrow provincialism. See, the, the, the Kurkong case was such a case, such a sensational case. All the major newspapers carried every day the day to day proceedings. In fact, when he came out of the prison and started the Tamil event, even the Tamil edition was there. All the issues were subscribed. A Marathi edition was planned. And so it, there was a kind of pan Indian sentiment that That's one. The second, he said, is that people are no longer afraid of authority or subservient. Now, any colonial government can only survive as long as people are willing 